So I'm just going to show you how we can use uh, the velocity to uh, affect the colour of a particle um, or other things, but we're just going to do um, the uh, colour to begin with. So I've just, a bit of a head start, made a very simple, I've got a plane, which is that, into a source particle. I haven't changed anything yet, so when I hit play, they'll just all fall. So what I'm going to do is going to in the source particles going to have when we met on frame one and end on frame one, and I'm going to have let's say ten thousand of them. That'll do. Um, I don't want any speed like that. I can leave that like that, and I just want to turn off the gravity. So what will happen is it'll just sit there. And then they die. So let's turn on live forever. So now they will sit there. And there we go. So just going to give them some color. Create a color node, set property, call that color. Um, change the value so we can make it into a, uh, let's do an array of float four. We'll make it one and one. So we've got red ones. Right, so not doing anything else to them apart from I'm going to animate through a cylinder. Um, which will be uh, animating. Let's do some animating. Uh, there's a key there. Let's go to frame 130 and put them there. So he will now do that. So um, I'm just going to bring this in as a collider. Like that. Plug that into my collider. Set it to, uh, that's fine, set it to absolute, like that. And then hit play. You can see we push them out. So it's pushing all those guys out, like so. Um, they're sort of flying up in a weird sort of direction. Let's get rid of these. Um, let's do inherent velocity. On the, if you do it on the collider, it's basically how much the velocity is going to be inherited by the particle. I'm just going to put that at 0.2, which is slightly a bit less. And um, what else do I want to do here? Bounciness. Let's turn the bounciness off. Particles are not going to be that bouncy either. Uh, let's see if they inherit velocity off of those as well. That's actually off the thingy, isn't it? Um, so I don't want to fly off too far. I wonder if I add a little bit more detail to this guy, whether he will be a little bit less weird. It's a little bit better, so they're sort of flying off. Um, and let's do a drag. So I just want to sort of slow them down. Um, tab, drag. So that's just pushing them out of the way. So let's turn this drag down a bit. Yeah, so there we go, that's a bit better, isn't it? Um, let's make it one. There we go. 
Um, shall we try and make them collide with each other? This might slow it down a bit, but oh, no. out away. So yeah, I think that will work. It's not too slow, is it? So let me just make that this 130, it doesn't need to be any longer. Right, so we've got a colour. And generally no one's moving apart from when they're being pushed. Like so. So I'm not gonna bother cashing it out, but I'm going to play around with how we can use a velocity. So it's a slightly little bit more complicated than we've been looking at, but should be okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get hold of the velocity of the particles. So we'll turn drink of water. And we there's a node for that called get par point velocity. There we go. So if we plug that in, we are now getting those point velocities. And velocities are um, they're three numbers. They're like an X, Y, and a Z, but they don't actually have a position. They are they're a direction and a speed. So they're sort of showing which way the particle's pointing and how quickly it's going in relation to how far it travels over a frame. So we want to access that sort of information. And so what we want to do is we want to get the length of the velocity. So how far it travels over a frame, and that's basically its speed. Um, so there's a node for that called length. Oops. So we've now got the individual lengths for each of these particles. Um, and the next thing we need to do is we need to get hold of the color of the particle. And we do that by doing a node called get geo property which will allow us to access individual properties of uh, an object like a particle system or a mesh. Um, so let's plug that in. We want color. So that's C-O-L-O, -O, like that. And we have to tell it what sort of data type it is. And it's gonna be an array. So not just a math flow tree, but it's an array of it, which means it's a whole list of all the colors of every single particle. Something like that, and that should then stop erroring. Um, so now I've got all those particle colors. Um, I could just multiply the velocity length onto all those colors. Um, if I do that, let's give that a go. Multiply, uh, tab, multiply. So we take the data, we're going to add the length, and what happens here is when you get these little dots, um, this is an array as well, so this is a list of all the speeds for all of the particles, and this is a list of all the colours. And when you get these little dots, it, says it knows it's an array, and what it's going to do is it's going to go through each, because they're the same amount of them, the same list, it's going to go through each one, so each particle, and it's going to look at its length, and it's going to multiply it to its colour. So we've done that, and then we need to reapply it back to the particle, so we need a set geo property, like that. and we put the data back into there, and we tell it that this data is colour, and you can see it's automatically because these are auto ports, it's automatically sort of set that value type as the one we want. Um, but we need to apply it back to the particle. So this has a port for geometry. So we put that in like that. So what we've done is we can quickly look. We've got the velocity, we've got the color. We turn the velocity into a length, how long it goes over a frame. And we're multiplying that over the color. And it's going to multiply over all of them. Um, and then we are re 
placing that data back onto the geometry, i.e. the particles. If we do that, they're all clear out. If we hit rewind, oh, that didn't work. Yes, I know why that didn't work. Because, there we go. Um, it's pretty cool in itself, isn't it? Um, what's happening is, is the velocities are on all these um, uh, sorry I can't speak on all these static particles they're zero so at the moment we are just um, when, they're, when they're static they don't have any colour because we are overriding that with the length and the length is zero so we're multiplying all these by zero which is zero and it's only when they're being interacted with that their velocity changes and that's being applied to their colour which is pretty cool wasn't what I was expecting but that is pretty cool isn't it Right. So, um, you know, they all fade out as they slow down. Um, that is cool. So, is it changing the da, 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 da? right? So maybe we don't want to just do that just clean over the top of it um, and because their velocities are set to zero let's do something that will give them um, well actually let's do this first right what we're going to do is we are going to separate out the different RGBs and alphas from this color so at the moment we've just got all of them as one sort of list I want to separate them out into in their own individual lists of red green blue and alpha so what I do is I go tab and I want a vector to a vector four because it's got four attributes uh, the RGB and the alpha to scalar. So we do that, plug that data in there. So now they've all been separated out. So I could now multiply, say, uh, let's take that one out. I'm just going to multiply the red like so and now I've got to rebuild this vector so I can go scalar to vector 4 and you can see you get the scalars but they come out as a vector so I can just plug in the yellow even though they're Y and Z and W yellow B and alpha here and then just plug in that into the red and then take that over. So theoretically, we're going to rewind now. There we go. They're all black. Uh, why are they all black? Oh, I know why. Because red is the only color I've got on it. And now it's being controlled by the density. So let's put a bit of color in here. There we go. So. Let's just have a look at this all together. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting the color, splitting it into its different ones. I'm just multiplying the velocity on the red, which means there is no red at the moment because it's all zero. Um, and then we are um, building them all back together and then replying them in. So now when we do that, we get that. So that's pretty cool, works quite well. Um, quite nice for, I mean, you could do things like, um, you know, if you had a character moving through a field of these and they were changing colors as it was touching and pushing them, which would be nice. Um, what else should we try to do here? So I'm multiplying that by zero. Let's not multiply it, let's do an add. So rather than multiplying it, I'm just going to do an add. So that way we get the original color. Like so let's just disconnect those. There we go. So it's all multiplying that over the top of them. 
I'm making them a bit redder. Let's go back to here. Just let's turn that back to one. There we go. Hmm, is that not worked? Hang on. 0.5. Rewind. Is that working? Move that 0 0.6. 0 0.8. Yeah, they are getting redder. Um, and now let's make that 0.8 as well. Get some purpley colour. Right. And then when we do that, they should, yeah, they get redder. Um, but then they go back to their original colour. So there's all sorts of things you can do playing around with this. Um, this is what I'm doing here. Not only am I changing them over the time, but their colour is getting more uh, at speed. It gets brighter, so you get these sort of whiter bits, which are quite nice. Um, so that's a basic look at how you can get your velocities and what's good about this is you can do this after you've cached them so you can you know you've got this control to play around with them afterwards um, maybe I will unplug that put that one in there let's do the green let's see what happens where's he gone Oh, he's over there. <laughs> so yeah, so we're getting a nice little green. So, um, you know, like weird phosphorants in water, if you had quite a lot. I mean, you could do this with things like the NPM fluid system, which are particles, which we'll look at later. So you could get that sort of phos phos phosphorants look, you know, when um, those algae are agitated and they glow. Right, there you go.